see? All right. All right, it's still not 6.01. Oh, is that what it takes? <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, it was still 6 o'clock. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome to the meeting for November 5th, SoCal Creek Water District. Um, did I say, what did I say? November. Is it November? Yes. Did I say the right thing? Yes. It is November. Okay, we got well, that. It's interesting our minutes say October 15th. <laughs> well, that's last meeting. Oh, that's the minutes. Yes. yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Check. Got it. All righty. So anyway, we've now got all of the directors here. We have no public <laughs> hearings tonight. <laughs> we have a consent agenda. And is there anything anyone wishes to take from consent? Not me. No. I see nothing here. Anyone from the public? Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. I would like to um, discuss more fully item 3.4 and 3.5. 3.4 and 3.5. Yes, That's fine. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll make the motion to move the others. Second. Moved and seconded to for all of the other consent agenda items. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Excuse me. Do I get to offer a request? Oh, I'm sorry. Topics? I didn't see you there. Sure. No, I didn't Did you have another it. one? Yeah, Colonel Maxwell and I would like to uh, comment on 3.1. Oh, we're not doing that yet. We're pulling things. Is there something You're else? You're pulling them pull? to comment. Pulling. So you would like 3.1 right. like removed from the agenda? No, not at all. Removed from the consent agenda. I'd like to make comment on it. I'm a, you have what, to pull it to comment on it. Yeah, what, so that's fine. So Stein. I what didn't see you there, so that's fine. We'll pull 3.1 for you. And 3.4. That's already been pulled. pulled. And 3.5. Well, okay, so it had to be redundant to Ms. Steinbrenner's request. Um, and one never knows how arbitrary and capricious your decisions will be. Um, 3.5. Already done. And 3.6, okay. And 3.4, exceptionally so. Okay, well, so that turns out to be 3.1, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6. I'll move the others. So, okay, so. And I will second the others. All right, we will re-vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, and now 3.1. Now would be the time if you need to make comment on uh, item 3.1. Your minutes from the prior meeting, if that's what it was, uh, fail to be fully accurate in my view in the public comments made. So I'd like to have clarification of that provided by your offices when I come by for it, for an explanation of why all the critical comments by the public weren't mentioned especially the impact of the rate increases and the $400 a month people were impacting and so forth. Um, again, uh, a lot of the negligence of this board uh, was illustrated in the comments and they weren't all included in my, when I read your minutes. Any other comments on item 3.1? I move approval 3.1. Did you want to comment? I second. Hold on. I would, just briefly. Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. Um, I had not planned to comment on the minutes, but I will um, add to what Mr. Maxwell said. In reviewing your minutes over the years, I have seen a definite decrease in substance in terms of what is included uh, of, from not only, mostly what the public says, um, they used to be much more informative and you could really get a better feel of what went on at those meetings and now there are no names mentioned whereas there used to be and there's not even the subject mentioned in what the public comment was so I think returning that to your minutes would be a good service to the public and uh, really document what goes on in your meetings much more fully thank you thank that's you. why we videotape everything <laughs> so you can sit there and watch okay. the entire meeting uh, my name is Scott. Just comment on, on the minutes. Comment on 3.1. Okay. I also had not intended to comment on the minutes, but I was here the entire meeting, and it was very clear that item uh, on rate increases was about rate increases, and you really should have said it was on rate increases. There were 13 spe people who spoke up about that matter. It's really um, hard to believe that you wouldn't see the necessity to describe 
the, uh, the unhappiness and or the concern of the people about the rate increases in particular that they were far beyond uh, nine percent so uh, thank you for your time thank you you already commented on three point no no, no sorry no, you, you don't do that that is not appropriate and not okay your minutes are not true oh no, I'm sorry you're done your minutes are not true want to leave the meeting okay thank you and um, so our minutes before we had access to video recording were more detailed and since we've had that available on live streaming then we have cut them down and so anyone who wants to watch any part of the meeting oral comments anything is welcome to do that and I will entertain a motion I made the motion and second okay all in favor it was um, I made the motion. Bruce Daniels second that was actually okay all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. opposed great Alrighty, and next item that was removed from consent was item 3.4 Thank you. Item 3.4 is actually a continuation of the consent agenda item of the last meeting, 3.11. It was um, incomplete. That uh, this issue has to do with uh, the additional uh, legal costs that the district is choosing to spend to uh, defend the Pure Water SoCal project in EIR. And I think it's very unfortunate that you're choosing to spend $193,000 to, to fight this. And, it's, and I don't understand it. Um, but I am glad, uh, Director Jaffe, that you asked that the itemized Exhibit A be included. It was excluded by um, staff last time. And it is very telling what expenses are and what they're going to. And I. If I were you, I would be upset <laughs> that the general manager had withheld that information from me when it was being asked of me to approve a very sizable amount of money, not to um, itemize it and really substantiate its needs. But thank you for bringing it back this evening. I, I'm sorry that it is so much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to comment on item 3.4? Was this someone else's? I'm not starting yet. Finally, finally we see the amount that you've wasted profligately, irresponsibly, in violation of the most fundamental oath, uh, principles of your oath on this board in violation of your custodianship and stewardship, consistent with your incredible profligate waste of your ratepayers' money by the millions, not just hundreds of thousands of dollars. This lawsuit defense, you're defending against a lady who hasn't even been to law school. I'm not sure Becky has a college degree. I apologize, <laughs> Becky. You certainly, you're, 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 you come across bright enough to have several. She's not even a lawyer. You pay Mr. Basso $8,000 a month reportedly and more. He's not, and he's been there for 40 years, 35, and he's not competent to defend you against a little old lady litigant who's asking you to simply follow the California environmental quality laws and review all alternatives to a hundred plus million dollar profligate waste. Unnecessary, because there's alternatives like Lockwood and others, that you've neglected. Are you in bed with the contractors who want to waste $130 million of your ratepayers' money? I think two of you are. And I suspect Mr. Basso is, and some of your staff is, your senior staff. Why isn't Mr. Basso, answer this. Let me have Mr. Basso answer it. Why isn't his $8,000 a month retainer adequate for him to defend against Becky Steinbrenner on her own? Why are you wasting half a million dollars, apparently, for this law firm in Riverside that charges, you to, charges your rate payers to fly up here? Why is the $8,000 you're paying Mr. Basso not more than adequate? 
It certainly should be. Now, I know something about legal billing. Complex opposition brief, $60,000 to research stuff that's easily findable in the California com uh, computers on the law. Opposition to an amended motion to change venue. Why would you fight her venue request? Because the judges involved are friends of Mr. Basso's. Mr. Basso helps people become judges here and they then do him favors. <laughs> Unethically, yes they do. Yeah. As, as Gallagher did, former law partner and former counsel here. He decided against the facts, the evidence and the law denying Becky a TRO to stop you from stealing technically, environmentally and financially from your ratepayers. Have you no integrity? Mr. Basso has demonstrated he has none. Shut down this legal arrangement, accommodate with Ms. Boss, Ms. Ms. Steinbrenner, and do not charge her the $60,000 extortion Mr. Basso was seeking his crooked friends in the county court to impose on her. The time is up. Um, anyone else on this item? This was informational only. We'll move on to item 3.5. 3.6. No, nope, she was asked 3.5 as well. Okay. Thank you. This uh, item has to do with essentially signing off a, a project in the Aptos Village project with sort of a satellite developer, Aptos Ventures. Because I've been very familiar with the Aptos Village project and I've been reading over your information, I'm aware that when your board um, agreed to the service um, connections and supposedly the water demand <laughs> offsets that I'm still not convinced ever were done at Cabrillo College because there is no verification at your office or at Cabrillo College, um, there was concern voiced at, among board members that there was a special deal being made for the Aptos Village project they were being allowed to use bond money to pay um, the associated fees over time, as I understand it. So what I wanna know is now that you're signing this off, this portion of the Aptos Village project off, what is the arrangement with this developer? Have they indeed paid in full all fees, water demand offset fees, everything? that uh, you were entitled to and that you agreed to in an agreement in 2014, I think it was. Thank you. Okay, any other comments on item 3.5? Okay, any motions to accept the project as complete? So moved. Second. Moved, seconded by Director Christensen. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Before I vote, so oh. I'm, I'm assuming everything's been done Yes, according to, uh, to Taj, I asked him about this. Uh, everything's yes, been buttoned yes. up, and that's why it's before you on consent uh, okay. agenda. I, I vote that. yes. Okay. okay, thank you. Item 3.6, um, somebody asked that to be pulled. I'm blind in one eye presently. But I see well enough to see government incompetence and corruption. Start his time. Want me to help he's you talking. Start the Fine, time. You can start for now. Yeah, he's. Um, Nothing new, though. The Water Education Foundation's 36th Annual Water Summit, October 30 in Sacramento. And I'm not sure what the costs were. I don't recall, I, I'm, not, I'm not observing the total costs here. Um, I, think, I think the public's entitled to more clarification about why you went, how many people went, was it really worth spending the ratepayers' money for, and so forth. And I'd like to request the specific per diem requests, travel per diems of anyone from compensated by the water district. Any other comments on that one? I'll move approval. I'll, I'll second. second. <laughs> you pick. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 
Thank you. And thank you for going to that. Thank you for going. Um, Very cute. <laughs> yes, I know. So um, next it's time for oral and written communication, oral communications. So now is the time for anyone to speak on an item not on tonight's agenda. Give you some copies of this. Pass around. Um, good evening. I'm Scott McGilvery. I live in Live Oak. Uh, don't have a vote Santa Cruz, don't have a vote SoCal Creek. I have two sons, they each have families in SoCal Creek. I've been concerned about water for the last eight and a half years. Uh, the last time we talked, um, presented information that demonstrated that there is water available, that water flows to Santa Cruz from the North Coast streams every month of every year. So I don't really think that's a question. Um, the reason I'm here tonight is to discuss the communication between your board and Santa Cruz's board. Uh, we've spent a lot of time in Santa Cruz and the people in Santa Cruz say, you know, uh, Soquel Creek really, does, really doesn't want our water. And I said, well, yes, they do. Well, why don't they ask for the water? And I come here and I talk to Melanie and other people and we say, you'll take any kind of water you can get. And I say, well, why don't you ask for Santa Cruz to send you some water? And, well, we've already done that. We've written three letters. So we went and we found the three letters with a public records request. And we also went and found the uh, CEQA permit that Rosemary Menard filed. It's only five pages long to in, uh, empower the pilot program. And I found four things in it that are really exciting because they're opposed to conventional wisdom. Two of them relate to uh, your, your position. First one, in Santa Cruz, they don't think they're ever going to get the water back. And you stated very clearly in two of the three letters that Soquel Creek is more than willing to discuss sending water back before the basin is completely uh, restored. And that's very useful. Another thing that you stated that they don't think is true, they think you need a guarantee on water. And you've said you understand that Santa Cruz can give no guarantee in water supply and it's only water that's available. That's very good. Santa Cruz has also done a couple of things that you don't think are true. One of them is this $100 million limit, 100 million gallon limit. Uh, I want to read you here. This might take a little more than three minutes. I hope you'll indulge me. This is what Rosemary filed in her permit. Um, the uh, amount of water that will come in any year is an average of approximately 115 million gallons, but will vary wild, widely from year to year depending upon water availability. In other words, if you were to ask for more water, if she has a lot of water, she's already got the permit to allow it to take place. This letter is a request to Mrs. Menard, thanking her for coming to the meeting, and it asks uh, that you could have more water. And in the spirit of the uh, 500 million gallon five-year agreement, we've only taken 40 million gallons, and it says that as many as 270 million gallons could flow between November 1st and April 30th. I hope that you will take this. Your time is up. Will, I, know, I know my Thank time you. is up. Time is up. And, and you know what I want you to do. I want you I do. to we step understand. forward. That's wonderful. Thank you for your time. Hi again, Monica McGuire. Um, so sorry to see you do that uh, with so few people here it just seems like it would be so much nicer to actually complete the conversations i'm coming forward again because i'm so concerned with how many people here in soquel creek water district are saying what what about this nine percent supposedly why are our bills doubling and and why is it so bad already it's going to be like this every year for five years what's going on and i I keep saying, please do your best. It's a very interesting story at this point. And as much as we could say we understand that you are convinced that you need to go forward, the lack of CEQA review of the better ecological choice continues to be the most interesting story that people keep being interested in, as I tell them, and ask them to please take a look and to call you and do their best to go beyond the very specious statements about supposedly, oh, don't worry, it's just this, that, or the other, and the continued, the continued misrepresentation to all of your ratepayers is so disturbing 
and I just had to come again. It's been a while since I could, and I wanted to say, I still trust and believe that you're under the surface somewhere there, waiting to hear the little piece that you go, oh, well you didn't say that all along. Oh, well now maybe we will hear. Maybe we should talk about this further. Because it just doesn't, it seems so difficult that this total lack of reason has continued as long as it has. And the, the simple, simple story that we've still asked you to explain, how on earth can you hold that cleaning rainwater could be anywhere close to as expensive as this huge project that you keep telling us you're going to give us no matter what? Please hear again. We are showing up again and again because it's our future that you're messing with by not doing the full CEQA job of seeing what's a better alternative. Um, anything you guys didn't get to read yet that you want more time that I can use? No, that doesn't work. We don't do that. Yeah. You have your, your own time. Yeah, that's just so sad, you guys. Well, if you're done, we'll go on to the next person. Yeah, well, I'm happy to. Everyone has the same right. Yeah. Please, please care more about your children, grandchildren, and everybody else, and listen to the community. I get tired of hearing that, because we do care. I know, I'm talking to you because I do believe you care. Uh, really and I'm do. waiting, as I said, for that piece where you Your say, Your time is oh. up, would you please sit down, okay. Ms. McGuire? Next, yeah. next person, Carrius. please. So rude. Yeah, Thank Everyone you. knows they have three minutes. I agree with all the comments of the previous speakers. I think this project is not only expensive, but very dangerous ecologically, and no guarantee it'll work. Wherever we are, whether we're in here or at your office, we're being assaulted by microwave radiation. I think it has an effect on the water, too, from various sources of cell tower cell phones. And one of the articles here is a report in the journal of Weston A. Price Foundation about the impacts of cell phone exposure on human peripheral blood. And to let you know that cardiovascular <laughs> disease is the number one cause of death in the United States, according to this um, article, in both a caring condition in an active use condition, substantial degradation, degenerative changes in the blood were observed. Uh, changes observed, let's see, with, uh, my vision isn't so good, live well blood amount analysis using a dark field microscope and digital video cameras to capture the images included dramatic red blood cell aggregations and stickiness, as well as red blood cell morphological shape changes, including the formation of what they call spiky cells. Such blood morphologies, the red blood cells clumping and misshapen shells, are frequently observed in ill persons and those eating less than optimal diet. Red blood cell aggregation is well known uh, to uh, disrupt micro, uh, microcirculation. Aggregation increases blood viscosity, and this impairs blood cell important factors in heart attacks and strokes. And we hear more and more of people having strokes and heart attacks and younger and younger people. So we can't act like this elephant in the room doesn't exist and there aren't problems. I'm going to leave you with copies of the article. You can see for yourself this is a big problem. I know one of you is a veterinarian. This affects animals, plants, insects, microwaves. This microwave radiation causing very serious biological okay. effects. Thank you. So, thank you. Time is up. Thank you.
Anyone else? Thank you. My name is Becky Steinbrunner. I'm a resident of rural Aptos. I'm going to give uh, to you for the record a copy of an email um, to Mr. Michael Wilson of your district from Nigel Belton, the arborist that's been evaluating your Twin Lakes Baptist Church area the, for the uh, landscape. And I wrote you about this. I have a lot of concerns um, because it looks to me like the district is going to be helping the church to landscape other areas of the campus. Um, and um, I will give this to Mr. Basso for the record and hope that it gets included in your packet for next time. Because it, uh, it says, uh, Mr. Belton says, I understand that the water district may have the option of planting additional oaks that are required as replacement mitigations concerning some of the other projects they have undertaken elsewhere and that you would do this at the church. I understand that uh, this uh, project is being funded by public money under Prop 1 and I have a lot of concern about um, public money benefiting a private religious institution. So I hope that you will look into that. But I am happy that some of the trees are going to be replanted. They never should have been removed anyway. <laughs> you should have used the Cabrillo site. Um, I really want to thank Mr. McGilvray for coming here and giving you a template letter to send to the city of Santa Cruz. I wonder when are the water surface water transfers going to begin? They can begin right now, as I understand it, November 1st. So, but I don't see anything in your packet. I haven't heard anything from you tonight, and I hope that you will bring that up for discussion tonight, because the reservoir is full, and winter's coming, and you could begin the water transfers right now. You could begin helping with conjunctive use and let the groundwater levels further increase in your area that you claim is overdrafted. So start it now. I also want to um, point out that um, there is still significant uh, harm being done to your customers by your rate increases. The tier two is to pay for pure water SoCal, and you approved that in November before approving the project. Um, and I, I see th in on page 16 in the um, board assignment status reports, that was in the consent agenda, uh, that no one is going to come back from you from staff to address Ms. Director Jaffe's request that you really get a handle on what is happening out there with your ratepayers. No one's going to come back to you until early 2020. Isn't the second round of 9% increases due to occur at about that time? So um, I really urge you to rescind your rate increases. They're hurting families and fixed income people. And I also finally want to say that Your as part of Granite uh, Well Way, you should not be working on the Your weekend, and I sent you the... Your time is up. Thank you. It is. Colonel Terry Maxwell on public comments that are valid and merited and accurate and truthful, unlike much of the conduct this board does, and your attorney. I want to first of all compliment your staff when I go in to pay the bill and the people who install and maintain the water. I see your workaday staff, I compliment them highly. And they will make excellent state of California government employees when this water district is transitioned to state water authority control or the U.S. Department of Interior or merged with Santa Cruz in a similar regional consolidation that cannot happen soon enough, getting away with you and your profligate, wasteful disregard for your ratepayers' money by the millions, including your outside attorney wasting your money and the ratepayers' money and my money, including your overpaid, overcompensated senior staff Messrs. Duncan and Dufour, notably. They're redundant to the water needs of your customers and ratepayers in this region. So the, the merger can't happen fast enough to eliminate you all and consolidate with people who will be honest with regarding respecting the ratepayers' money and honest regarding the resources of this, dis of this district and region hydrologically. 
Mr. McGilvray and Jerry Paul have presented alternatives to you to the Soquel Creek pure water, which should be called poop water inflicted on Soquel Creek, because that's what it is. That's what it is chemically, hydrologically, et cetera. You'll never get rid of all the pharmaceutical pollution for certain and probably not of the other, the viral and bacterial as well, and other chemicals. Enough said, it's unnecessary. Why do you waste your ratepayers' money? Why do you fail to comply with the Inval and California Environmental Quality Act? Ms. Steinbrenner, as I said earlier, she has bested the lawyer you pay $8,000 a month to who has to hire outside counsel to fight a little old lady to asking you to simply comply with the California Environmental Quality Act, which requires you to look at those alternatives. Instead, you hire outside legal counsel at half a million dollars or more because your lawyer, is he so inept? Is he incapable of looking at the law books downtown that Ms. Steinbrenner, who's never been to law school, is capable of inflicting on you to obey the law? Why have you wasted so much money? Mr. Bof uh, Mr. Basso, he should make up that half a million dollars you want to waste with outside legal counsel defending against Environmental Quality Act brought by a little old lady. You're not truthful, you're wasteful, you should all have to refund the money to your ratepayers that you've wasted. Okay, any other, any other comments from the public? Good evening, my name is John Aird. It seems to me that you have a great opportunity. You started this pilot program of sharing water with Santa Cruz or transferring water from Santa Cruz uh, to your district. It, the pilot worked. Uh, you should be complimented for your part in making it work. Uh, you've uh, defined an interest in expanding it to the next cycle. I think uh, the proposal before you is that you accelerate that. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. If the water is available in Santa Cruz and you request it and they can actually do it, I mean, th they won't release it unless they're sure that water security, they're in a position to do it, but then they can do it. And I think it's in your interest to do that because it shows your customers that you're doing everything to minimize the desperate situation that you've got. So I would request that you discuss this, not just shelve it, you discuss the advantages to the district and to your customers in requesting uh, a formal request the last letter I saw was, I think was 2015. A lot of issues have changed since then, and I think you should discuss it and, and either decide you're going to do it and do it, and then the ball is in Santa Cruz's court. Uh, and if you decide not to do it, uh, define why you, you are not doing it. What, what is in the interests of your customers to not do it? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so that's gonna close the, um public portion of the of the oral communications. I have a couple of things I want to add and then I'll hear from other board members. Um, one is that um, just because we have such a good relationship with the city of Santa Cruz and we work with them almost on a daily basis, um, they are fully aware of trying to maximize whatever kind of transfers we can do. Um, and I can get clarification from staff on why I, there is a reason why we haven't started yet i don't think in november but that's based on purely the city's needs and i think the water in the north coast streams um, so just it's been a very good relationship and i think i appreciate both the city of santa cruz and and our district staff because they really work all the time together to try and work on that transfer to work on an agreement for further transfers once the pilot is over and so um, i appreciate that um, another thing i wanted to mention is just that we, we got a letter from um, Congressman Panetta, um, and I just wanted to read in. Um, As the SoCal Creek Water District seeks adoption of a resolution authorizing Proposition 1 groundwater grant program funding for the Pure Water SoCal project, I wanted to reiterate my commitment to assisting the district in securing federal resources for this important project. I know that the groundwater emergency that your service area is experiencing is real and urgent and believe the federal government should play a role in contributing to its solution. The most recent invitation by the Environmental Protection Agency to apply for a low interest federal loan through the Water Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act program was well deserved 
piece of what I hope will be a fruitful federal, state, and local partnership. As you know, I have also been supportive of the district's application to the Title 16 Water Reclamation and Reuse Program at the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation and will continue to advocate for contributions to Pure Water SoCal from that program. Best of luck with your efforts to secure any funding that will ease the burdens on district ratepayers and contribute to swift completion of the Pure Water SoCal project. Um, sincerely, Jimmy Panetta, <coughs> member, member of Congress. Um, and I also, just lastly, I wanted to just mention something about rates. And um, I do very much want to see, you know, as soon as it is feasible, I want to see an evaluation of what the actual impact has been on our ratepayers. Um, and there will be some things that, you know, whether whether we do get the Proposition 1 grant funding will change how much we need. And so I do think, you know, as early and probably it will be early 2020 as we can, I think we should look at what the effect is and look at um, what our alternatives are at that point. Is we can, you know, we can adjust downwardly um, whatever we deem is appropriate for the budget. So that's all I have. Anyone else? Carla. Yeah, I also, uh, yeah, I was disappointed our our regular meeting of the finance committee is going to raise that that issue of the rate increases and th the effect and also the effect of potential grant money and low cost loans will really change the trajectory of those rates. But we ca can't really discern that until we finish through lawsuits and different things that we have, uh, different obstacles to the getting that grant money. But uh, we had a very successful uh, rate uh, committee. It was open to all customers who were interested and wanted to participate uh, in the rate meeting. And that's how we came up with the rate structure that we had. It was not the best, most ideal rate structure, but it was what we were legally required to, to do. It was legally defensible. And uh, it's, at the time, I think we all agreed that it was going to be subject to reevaluation. It wasn't going to last necessarily. It would change, change in the face of new data and new facts of what was going on. And so if we reconvene that next year, I would really encourage that. And we don't have these answers because uh, our finance manager right now has been incapacitated. She cannot. Um, uh, she can't be here, so she can't respond to your questions about the rates anyway. But that's just one thing I had to, uh, you know, at first I was just, I was ready to just be really, just had my feelings hurt, literally hurt that you think that the district is willfully not asking Santa Cruz for water. I mean, we work closely with Santa Cruz. We've been, we set up this agreement to research a uh, water transfers. We are able, due to drought, uh, drought conditions, we were only able to get water for two years to even further the study. And now, uh, as a result of this, the contested uh, water education conference that I went to, the meteorologist, it was a convention of uh, a lot of research scientists, state water board officials, they, uh, they were taking it as a given that we are looking at a dry winter at least t through January and that's very probable and so we are looking at the possibility of not getting water for that research project again just the little bit that comes from North Coast Creeks that's what we're legally permitted to take to do this research and uh, so really are we going to listen every month to <coughs> Customers not hearing what we're saying. We work with the city. We want this water. They make the decisions based on the environmental conditions and what they have going in their city, and they have to make decisions for their customers before they undertake a research project like this. So I'd just like you to consider that before we keep on every meeting trying to decide why we don't have water. We have good reasons for not having started this project on November 1st and it's not in our control. So, so anyway, to move on, uh, I did go to the Water Education Summit. Uh, I did it at the last minute, so that's why that item is on the consent agenda. 
And uh, it was really, I would recommend, it's a one day conference. It was, uh, I would say it was, uh, at first I had dim, the dim of hope, hopes for it because there were gonna be so many state officials there, but there was a really good mix of researchers and then environmental groups were there also. So there was a, a pretty good robust discussion of some of the issues. And the first one was what we have in store is uh, Dr. Martin Ralph headed up a giant consortium of research, NOAA, USGS, a lot of uh, researchers, Stanford, contributing to the, the, the quantification of this atmospheric rivers that everyone has heard about, that th they are predicting that this will be our main winter water source of water, is the atmospheric rivers. Uh, but they're concerned because they've been quantifying the strength of them enable uh, all of us to plan and anticipate the problems. And uh, they ranked them, and they said the most, the strongest atmospheric rivers, which are practically equivalent to a hurricane in strength, uh, cause huge amount of damage and provide for less water sustainability for our state. So they're very concerned that the climatology uh, forecasting is predicting that more of the atmospheric rivers will be category four and five. They will provide less water for our aquifer and for the snowpack up in the Sierras. And it's, uh, we're going to have to change and uh, adjust to that and make plans for that. And so it was uh, disquieting, but it was a very good paper. That was the plenary session. And the I'd be happy to provide the agenda, but there were a number of other good papers uh, adjusting to fire, uh, the Delta, <laughs> the Delta <laughs> River recovery, and uh, it, was, it was very full, it was a very packed conference, so, anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Bruce, you have something? I do. You wanna go first or last? Oh, yeah. I, c I have something too, so okay. he could be Fine. next to Take last. a number. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll, we'll just work our way down the table. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. First of all, I, I heard what it was said and I encourage the speakers and people listening to verify all the facts that were, were quoted because um, some of the information that was put out is misinformation. And I, after uh, last meeting, I went back and looked at the, uh, the finance plan and water rate study from January 2019. It's on the, um, the website, so this is one case, and it puts out very clearly how much rates will increase with the same water use, um, with the with the new rates, and it, I don't know what water use, the people who spoke last time were talking about, but it it doesn't jive with with what the rates are, what the rate increases increases were. I, one person talked about bills going from eighty dollars up to three hundred dollars. And that doesn't happen with the rates alone, but it could happen with rates combined with increased water use. So um, I will say that, that the district has a long-standing program, and uh, correct me, staff, if I'm wrong, if people uh, come into the office and need assistance with understanding why their bills are going up and also with things that they can do to keep the, their bills low, that that's a service that's offered. Roy and others, I know I've been doing that for a number of years. And then uh, the last thing I have to say is that um, I was meeting, uh, met with a customer actually today and uh, out of nowhere, they were very, very um, complimentary of our staff. They had a leak while they were on a trip out of the country and um, a flyer had been placed on their door one night but the next day there had not been a response so our staff followed up and called and through that call they were able to to get the message that there was a leak and uh, they were very thrilled that that the district staff was you know was concerned about their leak and concerned about the water loss and followed up so kudos to the staff for, for doing that. 
Thanks, Bruce. Well, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about this issue we've been kind of wrestling with a little bit about, you know, what the future is going to hold for us, in particular the immediate future, um, about, you know, what's going to happen to water in particular this winter. And so the big thing that's happened is that you know, there are all kinds of places and groups that, you know, give forecasts for what's going to happen. That's been going on all summer. But this fall, suddenly all of them started to agree to exactly what the thing is going to be, and they all think that it's going to be a, a, uh, a bad year. And I, I brought a couple of slides. These are slides from NOAA, but they, they're the same. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the NOAA organization. Uh, bring up precipitation first. Okay, so that's the forecast for precipitation. The, the pink and, the, the, I mean, the green and, and light green is where they're going to get more rain. Um, and that's kind of this kind of uh, arrangement that is agreed with with this climate change, is that the places that are wet will get wetter, the places that are dry will get drier. And in particular, you notice that there where we are on the uh, California coast, um, yeah, we're, we're going to be a lot drier this, this winter than, and this is for winter 19, so this is probably go through like March. And so we will probably, almost certainly, have a dry winter from this uh, stuff. And as I say, this is not just NOAA, that you look at all the different organizations that estimate the future for that kind of stuff, they're all saying the same thing, um, which is very unusual. The next slide, which is the temperature one, says that we will also have a very warm winter. And the reason that's important, for, the, for those of you who've heard my presentation on hydroclimatology, every time temperature goes up one degree Fahrenheit, evaporation increases by 4%. And currently, 66% of the rainfall we get evaporates one way or the other. So a 4% increase of that 66%, you know, if we go up two, three degrees, in fact, the last big drought we had in 2015, um, that was the worst drought we've had in 1,200 years. That's what the, uh, the scientists who study tree rings have come up with. That was, you know, back in the year 800. Fifteen percent of that drought was not caused by lack of rain, but by loss of the rain that we did, the little bit of rain we did get during that year. And so that is, looks like it's going to happen again this year. I mean, it, it, as was mentioned, it, you know, there's this blob, as it's called, which is this warm ocean uh, water out there in the North Pacific, and it's really big this year. It's even bigger than it was in 2015 because it goes all the way from Siberia uh, over through Alaska to you know the, our West Coast. So it's not just in the you know the eastern part of the Pacific. It's all the way across. And uh, and the other thing is that we have no El Nino this year. So that's another thing that often leads to to rainfall, and we're having neither of those. Um, and these two diagrams have been given to the city, and that's why we're not getting any water this year, because they're concerned that this could be the start of a big multi-year drought. That's the decision they made on their own. We have no control over that. So you can come and complain why we're not starting it, but it's not our decision. And that's, that's the issue about getting water from Santa Cruz. It's completely their decision. And that's why all these schemes that Becky and and others have mentioned are not, are not are not alternatives because if you think that it's an alternative, then give us water tomorrow. If you think it really is an alternative, give us water tomorrow. And it's because you don't have control over the water. The city has control over the water, and if they don't want to give it to us, there is no water. And we will have wa we we will have water this year at a l reduced rate, maybe a little bit the tail end of next year. But then after that, we'll have to go and renegotiate. And they have said that they will not be able to give it to us at the Colonel, reduced they, rate we're getting. There's no more now. back and forth. No. You should sit down, please. Sorry. please Excuse sit, me, no. Please there is no down. more There's public no comment. comment. It is. We can have you leave the room. We can have you leave the room. If you. We are, we have the police next door, so we'll have them remove you forcibly if you don't be quiet, because it's not your time to speak. Why don't we ask them? So anyway, continuing on, um, that's, that's what's happening now, is the city has decided 
there's a problem and they're gonna hold off on giving us any water until it's more resolved. And that might mean we get no water this year at all. Maybe, I don't know. I hope so, but. I hope so too. But you look at this numbers, these numbers that are coming out and it's a little spooky. And they, I think, wisely, if, it w if I was running their department, I'd say, let's wait until we see what the winter is gonna bring before you turn it on. And so that's what's happening right now. Okay, thank you. I'm afraid to talk. <laughs> um, first of all, I wanted to congratulate our staff on all the hard work they've done on applying for low interest loans. I saw in the paper that they've received a federal EPA low interest loan for up to $45, $49 million for the project, and that's great. I worked on a lot of grants and loans, and it is not easy. It's competitive. It's not like there's money just waiting for you. So I want to thank you and thank our staff for all their work. Um, the other thing is that I attended the Cal LAFCO conference and I was, um, there was, a, there was a lot about water because water, you know, is kind of the in issue. Um, they did a case study for the first day about Septiva water in Southern California and um, the water was being delivered to people that was brown colored and not up to the standards for drinking water. So people were buying water who were low income and um, the state stepped in and took over and had the, the county um, work with them to straighten out the situation. And this is a small public, uh, prep, a small water agency and um, low-income people. And that's the kind of problem that the state will step in for. Um, I learned that there's 7,500 public water systems in the state and 90% of the violations of drinking water requirements are from systems with less than 500 connections. We have a lot more connections and we have good water. Um, you know, the water board is reluctant to accept any more small systems, so small systems around here, they would be encouraging them to join us because we are a large water system. And there's quite a few actually in this county. Um, I took LAFCO 101 so I could better understand the basics of the process and the legal framework of LAFCO. It was actually very fascinating. We did some case studies where we worked in groups to figure out what our answers would be to some of the situations that have come up in the past. And um, I learned about quite a bit. I'm very, I, I kind of like LAFCO. Thank you for yeah. giving me this opportunity. Um, the, the one session about the, pu the private water, public water systems was called Water, Water Everywhere, but not a drop to drink. And there were more um, speakers. I just wrote down the stuff that was kind of interesting to me, but just because there's water around somewhere doesn't mean it's gonna get here. And they had a lot of discussions about that, so it's, it's a statewide problem. And then the last one that I attended because I was interested is on housing. It the, the, was titled housing is a municipal service and there was a debate what to do with the housing shortage and for median and low income workers. And you know, there's a push to provide more housing but then you have to have water and other services. And it was interesting to me because Southern California and Central the Central Valley have different issues than the coastal California. I um, actually attended the coastal region roundtable, and I met commissioners from all, uh, in the area, especially from Monterey County. And it was very interesting to hear about all of our different issues. So, thank you for letting me attend that conference. Thank you. All right. Brett? May I follow yes, up on three absolutely. things? Absolutely. Um, first of all, on the thank you for mentioning the EPA. Uh, low interest loan, I think it equates out to about $11 million in 
uh, savings for our customers, which is wonderful. But mainly I want to point out a thank you to the board members because that was not even on our radar to go, go for that money until you went back to D.C. Uh, uh, in, I don't know, a couple months ago. And you came back with the knowledge that the EPA was encouraging you to, us to apply for that. So thank you for that effort. Um, regarding the water transfer, I want to be very clear. Uh, the city of Santa Cruz did say they did not want to open the valve on November 1st. They're concerned, uh, well, first of all, they don't have a legal right to serve San Lorenzo water, but, and they're concerned about the water up in the North Coast that uh, if it doesn't rain, they gave us water, the books wouldn't balance basically for that water. So they're holding off until they have it in their clear sights, doing the prudent thing, uh, you know, environmentally and, and for their customers. So for that. Um, and, and thirdly, I want to correct a misstatement or insinuation um, that was made that we are improperly using Prop 1 money for trees, that is not correct. So I just want to get that on the record. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right, let's move on. Um, let's move on to item 6.2. This is for the water demand offset program. I think, Alyssa, are you yep. doing that? So uh, tonight we're bringing you an update on the passage of Senate Bill 13, which impacts the ability of the district to charge accessory dwelling units impact fees, um, like our water demand offset fee. And this is just the latest California bill um, addressing fee and permitting requirements for ADUs. Um, several bills have been passed in the last few years to make the process easier for um, ADU applicants as um, a way to boost affordable housing. Um, we've been modifying our processes along the way to be compliant with the laws. And um, we last adjusted our policy and resolution to be inclusive of SB 229 in late 2017. So this memo outlines the requirements of SB 13 and um, has some staff suggestions on how we could implement it to best utilize our current resources. We're asking the board to consider the proposed changes um, to approve an updated WDO resolution as well um, and for approval for an earlier implement implementation date. So um, effective January 1st, 2020, um, SB 13 makes the following changes. That uh, special districts shall not impose any impact fee upon the development of an ADU less than 750 square feet, and that any impact fee for an ADU 750 square feet or more shall be charged proportionally in relation to the square footage of the primary dwelling. So currently, all new ADUs in the district have a offset requirement, which is charged um, relative to the square footage of the new unit. These categories and the new law's effect on their requirement um, is shown in the table in the memo. Um, as you can see, um, offset fees must be eliminated per the law for the smallest size category of ADUs under 640 square feet. Um, and most of the middle category, which is for units between 640 and 800 square feet. Um, but for any units greater than 750 square feet, we have um, a couple options moving forward. The first option is to continue to charge an offset fee for these projects. And as I um, mentioned earlier, the new law requires that any ADU greater than 750 square feet can only be charged impact fees relative based to the square footage of the primary dwelling. So unfortunately, um, calculating a new requirement using this me methodology can't be done um, quickly or easily um, because we don't currently base the WDO requirement for single family homes on square footage of the dwelling. We currently base it on the size of the lot uh, to be more inclusive of the demands of outdoor water use. So in order to be compliant with the law, we would need to um, undertake an extensive overhaul of our existing single family factors. And due to the time and data requirements to complete this work um, and the quick time frame required for implementation, uh, we don't think that this work can be done in-house. Um, and that we would need to hire a consultant 
um, quickly with additional funding um, allocated from the board for this purpose. Um, if this option is selected, then staff is asking that the board also approve draft WDO resolution 1918 that's included as attachment two. The second option is to remove WDO requirements from ADUs over 750 square feet completely. Um, these, this size ADU is not very common. Uh, we have only had one completed ADU project over 800 square feet since um, we started tracking their sizes in 2010. Um, the vast majority of applications are for projects less than 640 square feet, and that is a trend that we expect to continue based on the lot size requirements um, by the city and the county and um, some reduced planning fees on smaller units um, through the county. Um, because there's not very many of these larger units, um, and they represent such a small portion of the new demand, um, that's why staff's recommending to remove those, the WDO requirement uh, from them as well. Um, at this time, uh, we believe that the effort to overhaul the single family factors um, to continue charging these few projects um, is expected to yield very little benefit to the basin um, and require a lot of resources to really implement um, well. And so if the board chooses this path, um, the corresponding draft resolution that's included as attachment three um, would also go with that. Um, and one thing that we did wanna note is that new construction ADUs are still required to separately meter um, from the primary unit and to abide by the green building code uh, standards for water efficiency. And those both do um, serve a conservation benefit so I'm um, just going to the motions to explain those real quick. Um, the intent, um, th this is structured so that the board would either choose motion one or two, um, and then additionally to vote on motion three, regardless of which option is chosen. So motion one would only incorporate the changes that are required by SB 13 and um, would incorporate those changes into the draft resolution um, as shown in attachment two. And then um, staff would come back at a later meeting to get further approval for any necessary work to um, overhaul the single family factors. And so motion two would incorporate the changes required by the law and would also remove the um, offset requirements from ADUs 750 square feet or greater and incorporate that into the resolution and included as attachment three. And then at motion three, or attachment three. Motion three um, is to enact the desired changes starting tomorrow. Um, the reason we're asking for that is to allow staff a little more time to process any refunds and to change our processes prior to a mandatory adoption at the beginning of the year. So um, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions about any of this. Uh, one thing that I was thinking about, I mean, clearly we have our WDO program structured right now as an impact fee. We actually collect money from the developer. But when we first started this program, we didn't do that. We just told them, you know, go out and save as much water as you're going to use. And we didn't collect any money from them at all. They just had to go and save water. And I was wondering if we were, pardon? I wondered if we were to restructure things that way, like we did it originally, if that would be acceptable or not legally. It's and given the way that statute has been drafted and the way it's yeah. been enacted, I think we'd have issues with that. Okay. Defending right. it. Okay, thanks. So just some real basic questions. I'm kind of surprised there's ADUs between 800 and 1200 square feet as a category. So what defines an ADU? There's an, is it that there's an existing an existing uh, home yeah where do you draw the line yeah what yeah yeah so the reason that the units over 800 square feet are so uncommon um, is because the lot size um, for the existing home has to be um, so large 
And so for, we talked to the city about it and they said they could probably count on one hand how many lots are large enough within the city boundaries to even accommodate one of that size. City of Capitola. City of Capitola. But what about? And then for the county, okay. um, their rules have been that within the urban services line, um, that ADUs over 800 square feet weren't even allowed. Um, and that you'd have to be outside of the urban services line and meet a minimum threshold for lot size in order to be considered for an ADU over 800 square feet. See, my concern is that somebody says, oh, no WDO fee, this is an ADU. It, you know, my house could be an ADU on a big enough lot, I'm sure. So that's my concern with, with, with just saying, uh, oh. No, eight, no WDO for, for any size ADU. But the criteria is that there has to be an existing residential dwelling on that parcel. I agree. Yeah. There can be large lots with existing in residential dwellings where they put a, you know, whatever, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 foot ADU, right? They, no. they do draw a line at 1,200 square feet. Okay, so 1,200, that, yeah. That's reassuring, but that's that's my concern. Yeah, and maybe this will help. Uh, Shelly just handed me the table. So, new construction ADUs outside. Should I do inside the service? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll do because that's I think roughly our boundary. It, new construction ADUs inside the urban service line. You have to have a parcel. Uh, Ten thousand square feet. Or greater to build an 800 square foot uh, ADU and outside it has to be larger than an acre to build an a, uh, uh, ADU on that 1200 square foot so they're limited lot by lot size allows you bigger the lot in certain categories three categories allows you a larger ADUs uh, but the ADUs are capped inside the urban service line at 800 square feet and for, for lots uh, less than 10,000 square feet, they have to be 640 square feet or less. And the law is 750 square feet is the... That's the break point. Mm -hmm. The break point. So that, to me, that's a no-brainer, the 750, but once you get above, I, I hear you're, you're saying you yeah. don't want to put a lot of effort into this <clears throat> for a little, for perhaps little return. I wonder if, is there a way to, um, to basically take it on a case-by-case -case basis? instead of having a policy is that dangerous to, well, do, to do that if, if something like if if it never comes up then we never have to do the work if it comes up then we would have to do the work and and do something that's fair and equitable could i you know another way to look at that is to adopt the policy and then if you have a case that comes up you're willing to take it and maybe re-examine the policy that's another way to approach it at least staff has something in in place and doesn't have to do uh and, and hire a consultant to do the, the numbers at that point. Well, I'll, perhaps the policy should be that ADUs over 750 should come to the board and decisions be made on that's, water that's, demand that's, offset that's, by the board. But they've got to be in, in, in alignment with SB 13. That's the, which is based on the amount you offset, and tell me if I'm right, but I've researched this relative to the size of the house that is, which is totally a different approach than we've been using. It certainly all can be done. I just want to be clear. So if you did take that approach, then if one came up, we would go back and have to, we would do that methodology. Right. I'm just, myself, I don't know if other directors are this way. I'm, I'm reluctant to, to say, yeah, no more WDOs, no matter how big. I'd rather say, no, you know, comply with the law, no WDO for 750 and below. And if it's above 750, comes then to us. comes to us or maybe just a suggestion. Maybe you could say the break is 800, given that there's so few that have ever been over 800. Um, so it would avoid the big one that you're talking about. Yeah, and as far as giving us more time, uh, we do have a conditional will serve project that has an application for a larger project, and so we would need to address it. Um, immediately to recalculate okay. that so there's, particular there's project. So there's already a project with ADUs that are 800 and above? 
there is a pending application in our will serve queue. Okay. So um, that's just something to consider. Do you have an estimate of how much cost it is to to come up with this? What appropriate? You'd be redoing our whole WDO program, like how so it's calculated for everyone. No, we wouldn't. Uh, no, we no, can yeah. do eight. Seven fifties are all free then. No, it's only yeah. the big ones. No, because it has to be based on. But we would have to the redo the single the family factors because the ADU, fa the impact fee for ADUs over 750 has to be based or proportional to the size of the primary dwelling unit. And because single family factors are based on parcel size and not building footprint relative to landscape area, uh, we would have to redo all of those factors and that would be a statistically derived study that would have to be conducted. I'm not sure that we have enough data within our service area to do that. We may have to go to other agencies and pull other data sets and rerun those so, factors so for Shelley, single what, Why do we have to redo everything? Because this is just ADUs we're talking about now. So why do we have to redo our whole Because approach? the impact fees have to be proportional to the size, the-, the For ADUs. For everyone. Yeah. Not for everyone, but for ADUs. For for the ADU, it has to be proportional to oh. the size of the dwelling unit. And so we can't take the factors that we have for single family parcels because right, they're based it, on it, parcels and we can't, per, we can't proportionally yeah. uh, determine what that ADU's offset would be. So it, it's a reworking of the single family factors. I don't understand that at all. I mean, all, the only thing that that law says that you quoted is that it has to use this ratio of the size of the main house and the size of the ADU in square footage. And we, sh we should know those two numbers. I mean, I imagine the assessor has the square footage of the existing house, and we would have the square footage of the ADU. So there's the proportionality factor right there. If there, but, if there go ahead. But we don't have the ADU. We do not have a will serve factor based on the size of the main house. So trying to make it proportional, we'd have to make a determination of what a WDO would be on the main house, not based on the lot, mm -hmm. but based on the main house, right. and then turn around and make it proportional to the ADU. That's the problem. Yeah, our yeah, factors are for the whole parcel, so they look right. at the indoor use and the outdoor use, right. and we don't have a way of separating that for the different parcel sizes. You don't have to then. All, all you have to do is get it. You, you can easily, which is something you do all the time, is calculate a WDO for a, a house. You do that all the time, right? You've been doing it for mm -hmm. 10, 12, 13 years. So you calculate that number, and then the, the number you use for the ADU is a fraction of that, depending on the ratio of the square footages. Done. So, so you, you you could do that. You could go specifically if there was an existing main house. You could get their water usage. You got the square footage. You you, you could divvy it out that way. Um, that that is, that is a possibility. I th I think um, the overriding thing in our mind is uh, a couple things. One, what what is balancing the uh, potential impact to the aquifer versus uh, you know the level of effort the the return on on the investment and the, and we'll do whatever the board says but um, we've got a, a person we're going to be one down here very soon so um, what size that ADU is what size is it um, I think they're proposing up to a thousand square feet so you do um, have one in the mix. If you look back in history, we've had one since 2010. Um, we did talk with the county uh, building department official, and he his thought was that, you know, most people are going to still be doing under 640 square feet. Um, one, because of the lot size restrictions, and two, because the county's created some really significant incentives for people to, to cap it at, at under 640. So they're not play, uh, paying planning fees and, 
and other fees, and he thinks that that's going to continue and be a trend. Um, another thing that their ADU survey showed was that the majority of ADUs that they were seeing come through planning and building were actually conversion ADUs, and so they were on the smaller size because they're created through the square footage of the existing primary dwelling or a legally permitted accessory dwelling unit, or not accessory dwelling unit, accessory structure, like a garage or um, a workshop or something of that effect. So people aren't generally um, doing new construction ADUs as much, and especially at the larger size. I think the other important thing that kind of swayed us to the recommendation, for one of the recommendations for consideration is, it seems like this law, I mean, it's definitely evolved, evolved, and I think this is the third evolution that I could see it evolving beyond this. This was probably a, um, you know, to include all ADUs. So it was another thing, so doing the work, and then next year it's, it's out. Um, but anyway, that was all the, I think, anything else that went into our conversations about the different recommendations? And both motions are up there. I'm going to just propose a question to the, um, not getting the ADU, the WDO fees from an ADU between 800 and 1200 feet should, in my opinion, I don't see how that would cause any less conservation. And, and you're only getting it for the delta. They, you're not getting it for the full unit. There's a small unit. amount that would go into the WDO DO fee, but they're still going to have to conserve water based on, they have to have a separate meter. They still have to um, meet the other criteria for a green building. So I don't think this is a water saving thing necessarily. If it's existing, they don't need a separate meter. But if it's new, they do. Yeah. Well, new construction is just any additional square footage. Um, so if it's a conversion unit, they don't have to separately meter. Right. That's where that distinction is. Mm -hmm. do, do, if conversion ADUs at this time still have uh, ADU, they still have the offset requirement, but. I understand. So, and just to be clear, it, it, so if you had, it, under the existing law, if you had an 800 square foot ADU, just by going by the strict regs of SB, was it 13? Yeah. Um, you could calculate an offset for 50 square feet. So it's the delta from 800 to 750. I just want to, so it's not the full unit. <laughs> so. Yeah, so my, yeah, so it's, so my impression is the law was to designed to uh, cover most ADUs, like most of the ones that are being built or mm -hmm. intended to be built, and other planning, uh, other governmental, uh, there are other influences on the size of it to drive it down into that thing, and I'm wondering why we would stop, go at 800, why, why not just let everybody, everything go, and then if it turned out that there's something that comes through that looks like it ought to even be a duplex or something. I mean, it's not, you know, that would come to the board. I think having every, anything that came up that was 800 feet, which I don't know, I don't think there's that much benefit to that. I think we're, you know, the state is trapping most of the ADUs that are gonna be coming through mm -hmm. our and district. And I think that our intention is that we just want to make sure that any offset fee that we are charging for is, you know, as compliant with the law and that it's, um, you know, statistically derived and accurate. And we're concerned about, you know, rushing through this for these couple projects and, and may not, you know, be able to get a real good um, offset calculation for for them, so um, you know, we we want it to be defensible mm -hmm. and and good if we're moving forward with it. Got it. Any other questions or comments? Any public comment on this item? Thanks for reminding me, Colonel Terry Maxwell. Again, I'm appalled as a ratepayer, a citizen, and someone informed about what's been going on here with this water district by people who've lived here 40 years, who describe your board as negligent most of that time, and observing it myself for some of the last seven years, and people the last 25 years, especially like Ms. Steinbrenner, who've monitored you closely. You are negligent. 
You've been negligent regarding the stewardship for your employees. For how your is this related to this item, sir? Here's another bit of negligence. Sir, how is this related to this item? Here's another, sir, another bit of negligence. Excuse me. Why? You have this comment. Is, we are done with public comment on random items. Well, here's a very. This, is, well, this has to, to have to do with this current proposal for ADUs and the w yes. water demand well, offset your program. Your statement about ADUs and and what policy do you no think No more that profligate should, negligence comments related to what, nothing what to have to do with this. What do you think we should this. be doing here? What is your I comment I think you on should that? let the ADU units have their water. I've watched Mr. Basso some time, many, a year ago, castigate a lady who simply wanted to add a sink for her mother-in-law. And he pushed to deny that to her and you granted so you granted the Aptos Village hookups it didn't really earn. You granted a 17-unit hotel additional water draw. Inconsistent. What's your Inconsistent. comment about ADUs? You treated the ADUs, you're treating the ADUs discriminatorily and inconsistent with good water policy. Let the little old lady grandmothers have their sinks and their ADUs. Any other public comment? Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. This is um, this is a tough one, and the the difficult part is that legislation is a moving target. Tomorrow, at one o'clock, the County Housing Advisory Commission will meet, and they're going to be it's at one p.m. on the fourth floor in the large conference room at the County Building, seven hundred one Ocean Street. They're going to be reviewing pieces of legislation affecting housing. There are six that involve ADUs. And um, many of them are just bringing more of this type of thing, trying to encourage people to, uh, to build this infill, small accessory dwelling units to address housing issues. So um, it's gotta be a real conundrum for you. And I appreciate your good work. I wonder what other municipalities are doing that have water demand offsets. Have you talked with any of them? Um, w everyone in the state is, is under this same law and it will be changing. Um, and then to add to that, I am aware that the County of Santa Cruz is changing its general plan and changing its zoning and making, as you've said, a lot of different uh, new rules, especially to um, encourage and incentivize uh, ADU. So I suspect that water will be a big part of that, and um, I think you're going to see more pressure not to uh, have any charges at all. I do have a question in your proposed fees. Why a water meter for a less than 640 square foot ADU would be more by $40 than a water meter for a larger ADU. It's 410 for a 640 square foot ADU, $370 for a meter um, for a larger ADU. Also, um, I, I wanna point out that maybe you need to examine your water demand offset fee of $55,000 a square foot. Is that still defensible? And also, um, just to point out that your board did vote if Pure Water SoCal is built, all water demand offset fees would go away. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other public comment related to ADUs? So ADU water meters will be these so-called smart meters, I assume, right? Do people have any choice to People have always have an option to opt out. Um, what does that cost? $10 ten, a month. 10 a month for, for an individual read. Mm -hmm. It's like an extortion fee where you pay not to get irradiated when the uh, other meters work fine just increasing more and more radiation and do you inform people who are getting these radiation emitting meters of the biological harm that is documented and is there a form for people to sign that they authorize this harm, this experiment on them? 
as I understand this is um, does not coincide with the Nuremberg principles, not sure this is related which to say <laughs> that it is illegal to experiment on people. So we're, we're just talking about really a policy related to charging for um, ADU, WDO fees, okay, not well about radiation. They get water meters, right? So this is but it's not different to it. for an ADU than anything. It else. should be safe metering okay. that doesn't microwave. This people. policy isn't thank related you. to what type of meter. Okay, thank you. All right, so. Um, any other comment? I'm going I'm to go ahead and make a motion then that we go with the second um, motion and the third motion, which um, approves the resolution of attachment three. I'll second. Okay. So that is that is the here. one where we're eliminated them, not trying to. It was the staff recommendation. Okay. So. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Okay, motion passes by three to two. They, they, they didn't roll call. It's a roll call vote for the Oh, sorry, roll call vote. <laughs> sorry. Director Lather? Yes. Vice President Daniels? No. Director Jaffe? No. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Lee here? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, next item is item 6.3, uh, stormwater recharge. Wait, wait, wait. I think there's another motion, number three. Did we the effect I said two and three. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry. The motion yeah. included two and three. Motion included okay. three. So what, what is the effective okay. date? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Why did you make tomorrow? I'm curious. It, gi it gives a step. Well, Alyssa, do you want to explain again why you wanted to start? It's in the memo, but I think it gives them time to not get people started down the wrong track. We would also have to give people refunds that are applying for ADUs now. Um, that would be. That it adds a, another step for anybody who's applying between now and January 1st that is, uh, we just have to turn around and, and refund them their 10% WDO deposit, which is currently required. So we're and, just and, trying and to There's no reason that. to wait so until let's, January. Let's work for staff if you do it tomorrow. Well, I, I think they would. Yeah, I mean, they Less would delay customers. until it, the law, until it became um, January 1st. Yeah. yeah, I would. I think it would be less confusing for customers, too. Um, all right, so item um, 6.3, stormwater. Okay, let's see here. So item 6.3 is an update um, and direction on the progress of stormwater recharge investigations. And we had previously brought in September uh, the results of our uh, most recent investigation. And at that time, um, the board had asked that um, we come back to you prior to our budgeting cycle and um, give you any updates on grant funding that might be available and new developments with the project and um, go from there. But in the interim, in the last couple weeks, the county, um, our partner in the stormwater investigation projects has brought to our attention that there's a potential grant funding opportunity through Prop 1, Integrated Regional Water Management Planning and um, they have already submitted a preliminary application for that grant funding opportunity. It's a 50% a match and um, had a preliminary meeting with the State um, Department of Water Resources panel on that grant and there appears to be a potential chance that we could secure funding for building a stormwater recharge pilot project and so um, we wanted to bring it back to the board's um, attention and ask if um, you would be interested or would uh, be willing to contribute funding. Um, it is a grant match and uh, if so then the county would dedicate the resources to applying for the grant in full, which is a pretty significant amount of staff time and resources on their part. So the the real issue with the project is that, um, well, the county can offer up quite a bit in the way of in-kind resources, staffing, and um, land use work 
they're uh, strapped for cash funding and so it would require basically up to $120 of the district's funding um, to carry out that project. 120,000. 120, yeah. 120K. Um, so that's a little bit of, of what we're asking for. And just to give you kind of a, a rehashing uh, of the work that's been done on stormwater recharge um, since 2017, we've carried out a bunch of different investigations. They're highlighted in attachment one of the memo. And really, we started with about 30 sites that we were looking at. Um, most of those were within the district service area. And over those two years, we've really narrowed it down to about uh, four potential sites at Seascape Golf Course and the 38th and Bromer uh, County Retention Basin site. Those were really the, the ones that um, made it through the other investigations and looked like they could be feasible. The most recent work that we did was actually going out and confirming uh, with soil borings and percolation tests whether or not those sites did hold promise. And what we found was only one of the sites, and that was at Seascape Golf Course, um, did show some feasibility for a recharge project and that was estimated to provide approximately 11 acre feet per year into the Aromas Red Sands Aquifer. It would need six dry wells, basically, to um, get the water down um, below clay layers and into where we hope it could you know, percolate down into the deeper groundwater um, aquifer. And the cost of that was $1,600 per acre foot over a 20 year lifespan. So that's the project that, um, with funding, we would propose to develop through this grant application process. So um, what we, the district can, is being asked to do, again, is the $120,000, up to 40 hours of staff time, and that would be split amongst conservation and customer service field. Um, department with Alyssa and myself and as well as public outreach helping with uh, outreach of the project to the neighbors in that area just like we did with the last round of investigations and drilling. The county would submit um, the grant application including securing the in-kind matches. They would handle the contracting with necessary entities for um, additional engineering and construction of the project. They would handle all the coordination with Seascape Golf Course and the uh, procurement of necessary access agreements and operational long-term agreements of a system and any funding in excess of that $120,000 that um, the district would put up as needed to complete the project. Wait, the county agreed to that? County. Yes. Anything above one twenty? Yeah. Th that's what this would Part be contingent agreement. upon. And so we would, if you approve this proposal tonight, then we would need to go back and work with the county on documenting this arrangement and agreement moving forward. Now, if um, it appears that more uh, cash funding is needed that the county is not capable of coming up with through um, themselves or other private entity or public entities or possibly the golf course, then we would not move ahead with a project because we wouldn't want to have a stranded asset. Um, you know, we wouldn't want to waste our, our investment and our ratepayers' money. So that's a little bit about how the project would be carried out. And then as far as the pros and cons go, um, what we found, one of our key findings throughout all these stormwater investigations that we've done is that uh, stormwater recharge has really limited potential as a water supply, uh, supplemental water supply source, and um, you know it may have a higher level of potential as a seawater intrusion barrier, but that is um, even a little uncertain, and especially at, at the levels that we're looking at here, 11 acre feet per year of recharge. So. Um, that those are the draw. That's the drawback, really, of the project. 
Another drawback is that we didn't specifically budget any money um, in our 10-year finance plan in which our current rate structure was based upon, and so that would require us to basically uh, pull money from other projects that maybe were prioritized over this work. And we do go through that as part of our annual budget process and go through and, and look at the projects that have to be carried out and prioritize them um, at a management level and then bring that back to the board for final approval. So we would need to pull it from, you know, potentially main replacement projects that we have planned or other improvement projects. And let's see here. Um, we don't, tying back to the ability of stormwater recharge technology to really solve our problems, we don't think it can be scaled up or expanded significantly within the district. Um, what we found is that there's limitations in terms of available land, available runoff, and geology. And so um, those are really hard to get around. The benefits of the project, it could really serve as a proof of concept and pilot and provide additional information um, on stormwater technology projects and would allow us to take a look at the impact of, of the project on our coastal monitoring well levels. And it could significantly help with flood control in that localized area and improving water quality, preventing contaminants from running off into streams and, and the ocean. So uh, those are the really uh, plus benefits of a stormwater recharge project. So what we're asking tonight is for the board to consider whether to approve the proposed contribution of staff time and $120,000 or approve um, an alternate, alternate district contribution or take no action. We do have um, Sierra Ryan here from County Water Resources tonight, and she's been uh, working actively with us on this, and it would be the one uh, completing the grant application if we go for, forward with that. Okay, questions? Rochelle had one. Okay, so my um, first comment, I don't know if it's so much question, is when you talk about the cost per acre foot, you're looking at it not as our contributions cost, but as the total project cost. Mm -hmm. And when I do the math, for us, it's $545.50 per acre foot over a 20-year period. And that's a pretty good investment. The other thing is that I want to show some dedication to our water plan. And our water plan includes storm water. It includes recycled water. It includes um, surface water. And if this is a project that we can do that's part of that plan, I think we should support it. Bruce? Yeah, um, yeah I remember that one of our previous reports on this, we looked at pollutants that were in the stormwater, and we did find some. But in any case, uh, you know, putting water into the ground like this, we'll have to deal with the regional board. And I was wondering you know, what the regional board has said to you in your discussions with them about the permitting that would be required. Step in, Sierra. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to be going to the um, to the state board on the 19th of November and presenting about this project with the Division of Water Rights to the state board. Um, they helped fund uh, the work that we've done to date, and they're really supportive of this. The regional board has also been supportive of this type of project. Mm -hmm. The fine details of making sure the permitting you know that we're all in line with the permitting is part of the application process because all i've done is submit a pre-proposal i haven't done a lot of that level of due diligence yet but that would be part of this application process i just didn't want to go f too far down that road if i wasn't going to be putting in the in the grant so that's part of the discussion and the design that we have takes into account the water quality work that we did uh, and it does maintain uh, the kind of standard of separation between a groundwater recharge project and the groundwater level is at least 10 feet, and this more than maintains that. Mm -hmm. So I know one thing that the regional board often requires is environmental documents. Do we know what level of environmental document we would need to be 
preparing for this? <laughs> so the other recharge projects that we've done in the county have all been uh, negative declarations under CEQA, and that's what we expect for this project as well. Um, it is a bit of a moving target because recharge wasn't under the microscope when we did the last round mm -hmm. the way it is now. So that is something that I'm going to be working on as part of the application process, but we do have money in the grant. If you looked at the, the grant budget, there's, there's, I don't have it off the top of my head. I think it was about $30,000 for environmental review. Oh, really? Okay. Which is probably much higher than it will end up being, but I, I like to be cautious. I looked at the numbers that we came up with, and it looks like mainly those numbers have to do with just the construction of the dry well. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't include things like, if we have it, we're looking at it over 20 years, the uh, regional board's probably going to require us to do some level of testing over that time and reporting over that time. Mm -hmm. and, and that responsibility is going to be, as part of um, what we've discussed with staff, at least at this point, um, it, it would probably fall to the county, some sort of partnership between the county. Um, we have the water lab, so we'd probably, it's not a big deal for us to go out and do sampling and testing. In fact, our lab would love to do it. So that's, um, that's something that I'm seeing the ongoing monitoring as kind of part of our role and our responsibility. Mm -hmm. And also we, we might need to actually put in monitoring wells rather than just you know, testing the water that's in our well that we just put in the well. You know, mm. look at it down slope kind of a thing. And uh, that probably also would need to be considered. In That's this not something that I am anticipating that they would be interested in, although I could bring it up when I do talk to regional board staff about it. Yeah. Are, are you talking about um, water quality? Well, even just, you know, simple things like a, a gas station leak. They, they require uh, wells to be drilled, you know, in a you know, range around those so you see the flow of uh, pollutants and not just, you know, did we put pollutants down there? Yep, there are pollutants down there. Uh, they they want to know, you know, are, do, they, do they get degraded as they flow or mm -hmm. they keep going and so. And again, I, I don't expect that level of scrutiny okay. from the regional board, but I won't, you know, if they're going to be requiring something like that, that might change the, the decision point on whether we actually okay. submit an application. I'm glad you're looking into all that stuff. Yes. Then. Yeah, and you had some preliminary feedback from them on water rights permitting, and you want to talk about that? Yeah, so that was part of my discussion with some of the state board. Um, I've been working with the, the Division of Water Rights, and right now they're under the impression, and I'm under the impression based on what they said, that uh, this project wouldn't necessarily, wouldn't, wouldn't likely require any sort of water rights filing because we're not taking water from a downstream user in any way. This is, it's just stormwater runoff. It's not coming from a stream. Um, that was actually a part of our decision making process to begin with when we were identifying sites. And they, first of all, are trying to, at the state level, make it easier to do recharge because they recognize that it is an absolute necessity. And secondly, this project doesn't look like one that they would require water rights for anyway. Good, excellent, Yeah. thank you. Bruce? So since you're up there, so in-kind costs and land valuation mm -hmm. is what, plus $20,000, right, is what the, the county is, is uh, proposing. Right, right, for. right. So basically the, the total, the project requires 50% match. The preliminary, this is a very preliminary budget that you've seen, and it's, if anything, it's going to be on the high end because that's how I do my preliminary budgets. And then as we get numbers, we can, more in more um, set in stone, we can lower it. But this is assuming that basically you'd be paying about 25% of the project, overall project cost. 50% um, of it would be coming from the grant. The other 25% would basically be coming from the county as in kind. So that's my staff time um, working um, other other environmental health or water quality team, for example. Hopefully some from Public Works and then some cash match as well from, from us. That pencils out. It should. <laughs> <laughs> Preliminarily, it did, and I. But there's not, there's no land valuation involved. So in I do have a fifteen thousand dollar line item in here for land valuation, and that's something that I need to double check with the funders. Sometimes they allow that, and sometimes they don't. Okay. 
And this would and all be. I, I, we didn't get that detailed budget. No, I know. Oh, sorry. Well, it's not a very detailed budget. But somewhat detailed. <laughs> it's a slightly more detailed. I do assume some um, value of the, the land that would be more like a donation from the, the golf course to let us do the project there. And then I guess more a question for our staff. One of the benefits is that was listed was uh, storm a benefit with a storm runoff because it floods mm -hmm. so is who would who would, the people who benefit are they contributing anything to this the beneficiaries of flooding would be yeah. local homeowners and, well, and the golf yeah. course and we haven't approached any any other parties for any sort of funding at this I think, time I think traditionally that's seen as a public works kind of domain they, I don't think they have a financial contribution up here, but um, I thought I saw the maintenance. Is that correct? Yeah, so um, part of the yeah, right there. Part of the negotiations as we're doing this will be working with Public Works, and I've been talking to them for a long time. Um, their new director is really supportive of recharge projects as well as um, the recharge is in the county strategic plan is one of our objectives, and that puts a little bit of fire under the departments to, to move forward. So part of this assumes that Public Works would be doing the maintenance, which is something they've agreed to a long time ago on, on recharge projects. Um, it's, it's very low maintenance. It's just going annually when they're cleaning out the storm drains. They also clean out the catchments, the sediment catchments at these wells. Um, and then possibly some cash match from them as well but yeah and is the is um is the 20 year estimate is that what's that based on so the engineer came up with the 20 year life estimate um these torrent wells i think actually have a longer lifespan um and that's something that we can recalculate i need to sit down with torrent um and talk to them about that that 20 year lifespan i think that was a very conservative estimate based on the engineer um uh, masidi miller engineering who did the preliminary designs i actually anticipate that this will probably have a longer lifespan which will lower the cost per acre foot when you do the calculations okay and then i don't know if you're the right person or our staff the relationship of of this particular recharge well to the uh, coastal monitoring wells, because that was one of the benefits, mm -hmm. was perhaps seeing an effect at coastal monitoring well. And then the other is the relationship to Seascape's well that they pump from. Mm -hmm. It's it's actually fairly close to where Seascape pumps from, and we could we do well, or we we could be doing um, well depth monitoring at their site to see if we see any change. Um, we could add them. We do the the county does biannual. I can't. Is that twice a year? Twice a year, they go around and and uh, do the Casgem monitoring, for example, and, and some other private wells that we do um, well or water level monitoring in wells. So we would probably add this to that cycle so that we could see um, if there's any impact at their well as for the coastal monitoring well. Leave that to staff. How far from the coastal monitoring well is it? Uh, do we have any diagrams of that? I'm not oh. sure. I I wouldn't know. We would have to. So it may I not would, be I would suspect. I mean, did did you consult Cameron on this? I think we asked Cameron if um, he thought he would see much impact or effect from this amount of recharge in the coastal monitoring wells, and he said he did not expect to yeah. Yeah. notice I, observable I differences but i don't know where they're located in relation to where that's just really close yeah, yeah. I, I would not based on my and, and so are we really recharging water for the benefit of the golf course for <laughs> them to pump more is that what's I, going I, on here no, it wouldn't change the amount of water that they would be pumping. They just happen to be a landowner who's willing to work with us and has a bunch of open open space. I think they've got a problem in the future if, if we don't re recharge, if we don't get the water levels up with seawater. Oh, I, I think you're right, because they do, they do have their own wells that they're pumping from, but. Yeah. I mean, so I, I just. So 
you've talked with them they're open to this mm -hmm. yes i mean they they have let us do all of this work thus far and again there will be some landowner agreement negotiations and access agreements that would be part of the application process okay carla you had a question oh yeah i mean i uh yeah, i was really uh, supportive of the project and all the work that's been done i mean it was a very thorough metho methodical mm -hmm. view search for sites possible sites and uh it was really effective, but I was just wondering, um, in view of how little water is really rechargeable, especially another drought year, right. um, exactly, is this the only site in the county? Is this the ideal site? So really? we, we focused our investigations just in the Mid-County Basin area. Um, it's, I don't know. We we did a pretty thorough investigation. It's possible that there might be other sites in the county, and certainly in Pajaro, there are more sites that are suitable for recharge, but they're not going to cause any benefit to, to this basin. Um, and it, once you get into the, the Parisima, the recharge rates go down, which is kind of how this area got, fo got the, the focus in the beginning. Um, yeah, yeah. We, it, cause it, and also I was wondering about the pop, the the Prop One funds. Mm -hmm. Are there actual funds, and could you can you get a proposal do done yes. by? Yeah, so it's part of the IRWM proposal. Um, the way the IRWM projects specifically work is um, there's a number of pre proposals that the process actually started about nine months ago because first you have to submit to the the local group and there's an executive um, steering committee for the Regional Water Management Foundation um, that reviews the first couple rounds of, of projects and asks people to submit next level. And then at a certain point, then they go to DWR to review preliminarily and that's what we did uh, last month. And then at that point, all the remaining projects, if they can get everything that they need together, um, put in one application for the region. So the Santa Cruz region would be putting in one application. This would be one component of it. It actually takes some of some of the burden off because a lot of the, the background and introductory information that is required for a grant, um, that's all done at the, the higher level. So really all I need to do to write this application, I say all as if it's not very much, it's still a lot of work, but it's um, the grants due December 15th. So that gives about you know five, six weeks to um, refine things. We have the engineering estimates, both in terms of the quantity of water and the cost, which sets us up in a really good position. Um, the, the things I need to still figure out are exactly where all of the other money is coming from. You know, I, I have a good sense of it, but I don't have it on paper yet. And the access agreements, and then making sure that I'm in good standing with the regional board about how they would want us to proceed in water quality. But that's all something that can be done. I think I estimated it will take me about 40 hours to do this application. Um, so yes, it, it can certainly be done in, by the December 15th deadline. Uh, funding. I mean, we wouldn't be implementing this project until next fiscal year, so it would be after after July that any sort of real work would be done because it will take them a while to review, make comments, do the contracting. Um, I do anticipate that the region will get funded, the Santa Cruz region. The way IRWM works, it, it's kind of a, an agreement that as long as you can put in an application and you ask for the correct amount of money, um, you're likely to get funded as long as your projects stand on their own. And based on the comments that we received last month from DWR, I think they they really liked the project. They really like seeing recharge going in. They're very supportive of that. Um, so, you know, in in addition to the benefits from water and the research component of this, I think there's also um, it's a kind of thing that DWR and the state board are really interested in right now. So there's. Um, it, it's a great way to put a positive spotlight on the region and the partnerships that we have here. Yeah, I, I think in a, in summary, and Sierra, correct me if I'm wrong, what, what is asked before you tonight is what level of commitment we've put forth 120K, uh, is the district willing to commit? So, and Sierra can make a go, no go decision because of the grant timing. So that's yeah. what we're faced up. Is that fair? Yes. If, if you guys say tonight that, you know, thank you, but no, thank you. We 
enjoy doing the research because you know this has been an experiment all the way up to this point um and honestly the results aren't stupendous it's not a huge amount of water that we're talking about um getting into this site i think we were hoping to find something a little bit better when we started the process but um it's been a really good endeavor and i think you know we've received a lot of good um feedback from the state just for what we've done so far and we can call that a win and stop now but if we do want to take this to the next step and do the implementation you know now's the time the money's available we have the support um i can i'm willing to take on the administration part of of the application so it's it's kind of a up to you tonight if you're not but if you're if you're not willing to or able to for whatever reasons um, move forward with this amount of money now that's fine with me um, it will mean that I don't put in the application because I'm not going to be able to find this money elsewhere in the you know next five well, weeks well, well, uh, that was one of my other questions that mm -hmm. what would happen if you deferred it to next year that we would review well, the yeah. budget there there is no next year there's no next year yeah the this is prop one money it's available now it's not this is through the IRWM pot it's not going uh, I'm pretty sure that this was the last round of the IRWM funding that was in Prop 1, and it wasn't in Prop 68 in this level. Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, recharge projects are going to probably be able to be eligible for funding in the future. So I'm not saying that this kills the project, absolutely. It, it certainly might not. Um, there might be other grant funds either through IRWM or through stormwater grants or through um, the groundwater sustainability grants. Um, that become available later and we could come back to this then if it's more appropriate I know there's a lot of things up in the air right now that you are dealing with that are probably a higher priority um, so it's, it's up to you really have we, um, has the finance department determined whether the the 120k what impact that would have is it well certainly get an Im impact I mean um, it would either we'd have to if it's in this year's budget, which we would commit to, um, it would have to come out of either uh, OCR or out of another Why would cancel or pro another pro change out for another Why project. Why does it have to be committed to this current fiscal year when we're not even going to get approval until next fiscal right. year? All right. Okay. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. So it'd have to be included in next year's budget, um, and that's, you know, 120k of one thing or another I mean that's what it equates to or whatever amount you decide to if the, you do decide to allocate to it the, the, uh, I had a question still okay I'm like sitting here with these <laughs> questions um, if if we committed to the 120k but you like tw one of the things that I, I'm having issues with is that this is a flood control issue and I don't know if the Department of Public Works has flood control funding and you know like a like a budget for that area because I know they have different districts and all and I just happen to have a house where the drainage is coming from and I researched it and I was told that you know they didn't but I would want you to still try to get money <laughs> from, yeah, from public works and reduce our c contribution you know? um, right now as I'm planning it I'm planning to go to public works to ask for money you know it I'm not gonna make that effort if you guys say no because I'm not gonna right. get a hundred you know twenty thousand dollars from them um, but I will be asking for money from them and I think I can make a very good argument for why they should be pitching in and I do think that they will be receptive um, especially because it, we're talking next fiscal year and that makes things a lot easier when it's a little bit in the future um, so yes I, I do plan on asking that for them the other thing that I've found working with the IRWM because I've done that in the past is once you get your foot in the door and they see that you do good projects and they are happy with your project they're more likely to consider you for future projects um, there's a lot of um, I don't know I want to say camaraderie but d there's a, a w if they find somebody that really does good work it is very it puts you in better light in the future mm -hmm. as well as if they find somebody that never gets to the, the finish line they're not going to be as 
in, you know, they're not going to be as excited about trying to fund them in something else. And this is the best project, though? That's, that's what I'm kind of concerned about. I'm still stuck on that 11 acre. <laughs> Um, Nobody contributing to stormwater, uh, you know, flood control or anything, um, including the golf course. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just, uh, it was a really fascinating um, research project. I really do really appreciate how methodical and um, honest it was. It, you know, very, a lot of work has gone into this, but I just still don't know whether we are looking at the right place in the county mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, uh, recharge. Yeah, we're going to learn a lot from or a, yeah. a, a proof of concept recharge project. I, I Let me just, just clarify that. I, I've been supportive of this from the beginning, and I, I'm really, you know, happy with all the work that's been done so far. And I know it's only a small amount of water. I'm still feel like we should be trying to get whatever small amount we can get. Yeah, yeah. Um, because from all sources, that's part of our community water plan. Um, but I, so I just, I wanted to make sure like our contributions from the county and the, and us are somewhat equal um, or at least close. I, I feel like, is there, I don't have any idea like how much like you said we would need to put in some staff time. They would put staff time. There's ongoing, you mentioned that the ongoing maintenance would be taken on by the county. So I assume that would be in the agreement and I also want to, would want to make sure that if we do commit that we wouldn't be stuck committing and then the project wouldn't go forward for some reason. You know, don't want to waste that money. Right. So you had mentioned a, a way to ensure that. I wanted to just... Yeah, and that would be not actually moving forward with going out to bid for the project unless we were sure that we had adequate funding. Well, we have to um, and, and all the agreements were mm -hmm. in place to say that ongoing monitoring would be taken care of by the county or public works perhaps. And okay. could it potentially be less if public work than 120 if public works or somewhere else contributes? Yeah, and uh, the, again, this is a, it is a preliminary budget. It could be less if either I've padded the cost too much when I go back and, and really start evaluating things. The total project cost might be too high in here. Um, the contributions from public works could be higher. I can, you know, certainly we can approach the golf course and ask them to pay cash match in addition, although I, I, I don't yeah. think that's very likely, but we can certainly ask them. Um, and in terms of your contribution right now, this is about an even, you'd be paying about 25% of the total project cost. The grant's 50%, right. the other 25% is coming from um, the county primarily except for a small amount from whatever the valuation of the land is. My other more logistical question, like so if we approved that contribution, I'm assuming this would come back to us with a more specific agreement at some point? Yeah, as part of the, that would be part of the, sorry, I'm just answering all these questions. What, what we do no, is we, mean, would, so we would budget Because well, what I'm thinking is like, so we approved it, but that we would still have another chance later on to say, if this didn't look right. Yeah. We could say, uh, okay, and we, we haven't really spent that many yet, right. and we couldn't put it all together. It doesn't look appropriate for us. We could still put or the right. Or if the golf on. course doesn't agree to the whatever, work yeah. So we would have another opportunity, correct? Things that have to be. I, yeah, I think you're being asked for a good faith yeah. effort uh, right. tonight, and yes, if 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 something doesn't pan out while I'm writing the application, I'm going to pull the plug because it's not worth doing a lot more work if something's not gonna going to work out, but yes, you would have an opportunity during the grant contracting period, certainly, if not before then, um, y there would be things that need to be signed. Okay, yeah. okay, that, Sierra, I just wanted to one clarify other that. question. Do you think there's any other opportunities for additional grant funding, or is that generally frowned upon to get multiple, try for multiple no, grants on a project? I mean, certainly, the, the thing about these is that it's usually, it would have to be a non-state fund to be able to leverage it for the state money so um, any additional state funds couldn't really help offset the the other costs and I, I don't know of them although we can certainly mention it at the state board when we're up there in November and on the 19th um, I don't know of any local or federal funds that would pay for this right now okay okay um, any other questions or I 
I just have one question. Yes, sir. Only because of what Director Lather said. Is this going to directly benefit your property in any way? Oh, no. Okay. I'm you not mentioned, being flooded. And uh, you, <laughs> you mentioned the water. Well, uh, I have, I have a, a, a drainage behind my house that goes out into that direction. So I But it's, our, it's it. still going to continue to drain it's in that It's still going to drain. It's still right. going to have the same amount of water. I don't get to benefit. All right. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Thank you for asking. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so why don't we see if there's any public comment or on this item. Colonel Terry Maxwell on item 6.3, specifically, why would you hesitate for a moment to engage in surface or stormwater recharge? Given the re why did you hesitate to do it for the last 25 years? Obviously, you should approve this. And the $120,000 estimate on page 48 of 51 is easily findable, ladies and gentlemen, by reconsidering the outrageous $193,500 you've approved in your budget for Best Best and Krieger to defend you against a proper environmental lawsuit that you pay Mr. Basso eight thousand a month. Please keep it. Please prepared. keep your comments no, appropriate to that. It's the, not. I'm okay. addressing the source of the money, okay. Mr. Healy. We Dr. understand Healy. that, but the source stay of the on money, the subject. Reconsider before you leave tonight this hundred ninety-three thousand dollars of yes, profligate, wasteful, unnecessary. Okay, off on Have Mr. Subject. Basso earn his eight thousand and okay. attempt Excuse to defend me. you You're against Miss Steinbrenner. Subject. No. It's, you are. It, here's a source of money. You yourselves ask for money we sources. Need to, we're going to throw you out of here, we don't Colonel Maxwell. Money. Your own members. You're going to be gone. For, there's where the funds come from. Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner. I am really encouraged by this report, Sierra. And thank you, and, and to you also, Shelley, because I think this as Director Lather put it so beautifully, this really shows a good faith effort in doing what you have included in your community water plan. Maybe it isn't a big amount compared to others. Maybe you can't consider it a supplemental source, but it does recharge the groundwater levels and it does um, improve the environment. And those are all qualities that you stand for and I applaud you for that. So I think you've got an excellent deal here before you. $120,000 for you is really not very much. I mean, you've, you've applied, you've approved consultant contracts for much, much more and lobbyist contracts for much, much more. So here's our wonderful county <laughs> willing to do all the work if you just give them a little bit of money and I really hope that you will approve this. Because as Director Lather says, it really shows a good faith effort and a willingness to, to follow through on what you say you stand for. I, I also think that you could consider um, some of your water demand offset money to be used for this because as I remember the definition of what your water demand offset money could be used for was for projects that would not otherwise be done to help with the water levels. And you certainly are collecting those at a $55,000 an acre foot for your new uh, hookups. Um, I also want to encourage you to perhaps down the line look at uh, permeable paving um, that can be used t for the same purpose and has been very successfully done at the Scotts Valley Metro Center. And they even use it as a demonstration so you could get some really good um, bang for your buck on this, not only helping the water uh, levels, reducing pollution, but also a really good face with the public. And I think you would like that now. Um, thank you again, Director Lather, for really calculating the um, actual cost per acre foot to $545 for the district. I appreciate your astuteness. and. Uh, your dedication to groundwater recharge. Uh, Andy Fisher would be proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. One more. Becky is just 
tremendous. I, I couldn't agree more with what she said. Uh, groundwater recharge sounds like something very worthwhile to do. Permeable paving is another thing. And uh, the money comparison, um, this sounds like so little compared to what other money is going for that to me doesn't seem as worthwhile as groundwater recharge. Um, and I have a question. When you speak and you use what is it called acronyms when you're saying letters I R something or other, it's helpful if you state out what it means because I keep going, what does that mean? What does that mean? And here's um, my other question. We often hear about grant money. Where, what are the sources of grant money? Where, where is that really originating from? Could uh, someone clarify that? Are there different grants? Is it ultimately from the public money? Um, yeah, anyway, that's a question I have been coming to money's meetings for years, city, county government, and, and I keep asking that. Perhaps someone could clarify that for okay. me and anybody else who might have that question. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Um, undefined acronyms are kind of one of my pet peeves, so apologize for that. We should be um, defining every time we use one of those um, acronyms. Um, and as far as the grant that she's talking about, I think it's Proposition 1, which was voted on by the state of California to, you know, as a bond issue um, at one of our elections. I don't remember how long ago Prop 1 was, was voted upon and it was passed by the California voters to have this money that then is um, available to different entities to apply for, for projects such as this. Okay, so um, it comes essentially from, from our tax base, but <laughs> from the state of California. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, Monica McGuire. Um, that actually is a great point for Marilyn to bring up, and I'm glad you addressed it as you did, because when we let a word like grant be used when it's actually tax money, that's also confusing. So thank you for clarifying it at every opportunity. That's really important. Um, it is directly to the point of uh, stormwater is an incredible resource uh, that can be utilized as we've asked so many times and corralled and allowed to percolate into the ground. Uh, it's of course better for the bay. It works for so many goods and at the 55,000 for the water demand offsets, it's three of them um, could pay for it. So I again urge as well, wow, it just seems like such a great deal and hard to imagine any reason possible that you would actually say no to it, uh, considering all this, and would really love to hear more if there was a, a good argument that way, because so many things are strange that way. Um, we will be tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. in the court learning more about what Becky's got and all the questions of the sequel laws and such. We're talking so about stormwater. Yeah, but the, the decision is because of the Department 2 need for people to understand what's going on, where they can go downtown tomorrow at 10 a.m. That's not appropriate for this item. Oh, it, it, I don't know not. that uh, people know otherwise. It's just not. So, anyway. Uh, you can have a comment before closed session, before we go to closed session, but not on this item. Okay. Well, thank you for asking us for our help on all of this, too, because it's why we come. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make the motion to. I'd like to discuss it. Oh, first sorry. Time. Okay, <laughs> go for it. I know you want to get out of here. No, I want. I also been wanting this for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like where the project is. I think it benefits the golf course, and they should be paying for it. However, it is an opportunity to learn more about how to do these projects in our county. And the county is is very cooperative, so I'm very torn on this one. So I don't know if any of the other directors have any thoughts on it, or whether they just want to proceed. I was all set to vote no because I think the project is fairly undefined, and and 
and, and unestimated. And we, there's some things in there that we don't know how much they're going to cost or what the requirements are. And I was all set to vote no. But given your question about can we turn this down at the future, uh, that would allow me to vote yes. And maybe then we can get some answers to some of these things that I've been asking for for the last year and we still haven't gotten. You know, we still don't know what our requirements are from the regional board. We don't know what our costs are going to be. We don't know. And so I think if we go forward, we might get some answers to those. And if we don't, then I will vote no for the final thing. So, okay. Any and other discussion? And go ahead. Do you have anything? Well, I was going to, yeah, I was, I was concerned too. I thought it was a really worthwhile research project. And it seems like it might have some really solid value for that rate too. I don't think it's an ideal recharge project, uh, honestly, uh, because 11 acres is acre feet. But, uh, but we as a district have always supported research, active research, and moving forward on, on these fronts. And stormwater was part of our, stormwater recharge was one of our fronts that we were committed to. So, you know, I was same same thing, but I'd be prepared to vote for this right now. The other factor is that people are protesting rates. Mm -hmm. And so this is an additional cost to people who are already paying. And that's in addition to other things that we're doing. It's not in lieu of other things because everything that we're doing, I feel is necessary. So for the future of the, of the basin, but you know, I have to take that into account as well. $120,000. I hope it's a, the motion is up to 120,000 because I'm hoping that, that the, uh, the county will, you know, see the, the benefits for, uh, the stormwater, but um, you know, that's about a little less than ten dollars per hookup. So it's another way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. Are people willing to who who live in the district, who who pay for the water? Are they willing to spend ten dollars towards this? Now, can I make the motion? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make the first motion, which is to prove our contribution up to $120,000 in the staff time, period. I was going to suggest that you make it 25% up to $120,000 in case it goes up or down. And I mean, if the cost goes down, once she, she pencils it out but a little up, bit more. Up to that. And then I, I mean, we're going to get another more. But, but the 25% is important to you. Yeah. It, well, the 25%, w that means that um, cost, equal cost we are, are going to stay at the 25% mark if mm -hmm. the price goes down. Mm -hmm. I like that. So that would be like, the let's double. say it's 100,000 I mean, that was, yeah, that, that's fine. I can add that to the motion. Okay. Then I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you, Sierra. Thank you, Alyssa. Yeah, thanks thanks for your Thank you, And Shelly, I know you guys have worked a long time on this, and I think you know we've done research over how many years trying to find a site and you know use the SkyTem type technology to try and figure out the, the best site. We have a lot invested in this. Yeah, and I, so I'm happy to like see it. So, um, are you going to stop the meeting, clear the let? Two minute break before closed session. So what we'll do is allow any public it's comment first. for the closed session, and then we will go into closed session after a two minute break. Thank you, my name is Becky Steinbrenner. I'm the petitioner in pro per for public benefit, bringing the action. And um, there is action tomorrow, as you will hear from Mr. Basso, uh, for a change of venue. And I'm, I want to make it clear, I'm not saying that Judge Small is, uh, I, I'm not trying to disqualify him. I've been accused of that in some of the documents. It's just that I think that this is a very complex case. It is a complex environmental case, and it merits um, hearing under a seasoned <coughs> judge familiar with environmental law. And 
many of the, uh, some of the uh, causes of action have to do with the project's sense of urgency being claimed and uh, that it must be done to meet the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, which is a state uh, mandate. And um, there, there is some real question about all that. And that really needs to be researched and that really needs to go to Sacramento. So I'm hoping that this will be uh, granted tomorrow. I am not trying to cause unreasonable delay. I am trying to do good research and really bring to light some of the violations that I see, such as no uh, written consultation with schools within a quarter mile, 30 days before you approve the project. It's not in the record. It's not there. That's, you broke the law. And while council says, well, it's okay because nobody brought it up, it's the law and you broke it. And it's that level of wanting to make this project go at any cost to the environment, to the people, to your rate payers. You approve this rate to pay for it before you approve the project. And that's what your customers are screaming about now. And they will continue to scream. But for your district, for your council, it has become all about getting the money. It has become the, the focus is we can't delay or we won't get the grant. But what has lost sight of in your district is that the environment matters. And it's, it's a complex issue and that is why I'm asking for a change of venue. And that is why I'm asking to amend my complaint on Friday if the venue is not granted. And that is why I'm asking for a continuance on Friday if the uh, complaint is allowed to be amended. Not to cause delays and be vexatious as I've been considered. And I Time don't appreciate being sanctioned $40,000. Time is up. Thank you. Dr. LeHue, I'd like to make a comment. Um, okay, but let, let's let her sit down first. I will. $40,000 in sanctions. There's is another, your time is up and there's another person uh, waiting. The newspaper will love it. So I'd like to say again, there was some misinformation, incorrect information. The rates were not approved before the project was approved. You did? Okay. The EIO. All right, Someone, so. Thank you. Excuse me. You did. We have one more public comment. Terry Maxwell, I endorse and compliment Ms. Steinbrenner for the accuracy of her comments and also the appropriateness of her lawsuit ask as a concerned citizen and resident asking you to simply follow the law mr basso and advise your clients to comply with the california environmental quality act which you didn't do and as for the judges i'm not reluctant to talk about the reality of the santa cruz judges many or most of whom are got their appointment nomination and election because of mr basso's efforts that makes him a real fixer in this county. That makes him also, I've, I've watched the judges. I've watched your former law partner, You're the former counsel. Hey, wait, 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 no, wait, I watched him, the no, former counsel. We're not, don't, don't yes, even. Yes, he, he brought up the judges. It. You, yes, he did. I didn't okay, the judges. I'm not, you just finish saying what you're saying. Okay, and now, we'll go. this is before a judge. This is in the Santa Cruz. I watched Judge Gallagher ignore the facts, the evidence, and the law to accommodate your client wrongly unjustly and unethically. And that's something, Mr. Basso, you've got a reputation for engaging in all the time so your clients win. And for you to engage in your abuses, seeking sanctions on Ms. Steinbrenner, who's done the right thing to protect the public? As I've said before, have you no honor, Mr. Basso? Have you no integrity? Have you no ethics? Let's quit the attacks. And, and I just say to the board, have you no integrity not to comply with the California Environmental Quality Act? That's all she's asking you to do. And your attempts to abuse her, intimidate her, Mr. Basso, with these preposterous sanctions in front of a judge who warmly welcomed you to his class, his courtroom, gave you 20 minutes or so, and gave Ms. Steinbrunner less than a minute to respond. I watched it. Word. And Judge Smalls is unqualified. He shows a bias that he showed before to even consider this tomorrow as are all the county judges, because Mr. Basso apparently has the fix in with too many of our county judges, some of whom have behaved observedly corrupt, crookedly, unethically, to accommodate the county when it sues people, to accommodate the water board when it engages in litigation unfairly. 
and unjustly. And I'm tired of the judges in this county engaging in unjust results because people like Mr. Basso get their way. And I'm tired of this water board not complying with the law and showing disregard and disrespect for your ratepayers' money that you're supposed to be the trustees for. You just negligently spent $193,000 today, or proposed to tonight, for a lawyer you don't need because Mr. Basso doesn't come close to earning the $8,000 a month you're paying him in retainer to engage with Ms. Steinbrenner, a little old lady who's properly brought evidence, facts, and law that you violated the California Environmental Quality Act that is there to protect all of us. No, you said you were getting tired of a lot of things. I'm getting tired of some things too. So I'm Monica McGuire and coming again to uh, ask that anybody watching this understand that the information is fully available about the lawsuit. I'd be happy to forward it to anyone. Uh, I, you, anyone's welcome to email me at Monica at MonicaMcGuire.com and I will forward them the documents that I'd like to read from and invite them to come tomorrow morning to the court at 10 a.m. in Department 2 with Judge Tim Schmall. Um, because it would be so much more helpful if more people understood the details here, such as in the declaration of Ronald Duncan in support of Soquel Creek Water District's opposition to the motion for petitioner's request to transfer this case, which has been discussed. She's asking that simply because it's better for a fully qualified CEQA um, uh, judge to be looking at it who has the time, and that we have the problem that there was this huge amount of uh, paperwork that was demanded to be given that makes no sense in a county where that we supposedly have laws about trying to be responsible um, to have to put in 90 binders, I think it was, of um, 15,000 pages and such, uh, 30,000 on top of it. It was a, a ridiculous amount. It's impossible to even fathom it that will all will very likely never be looked at and that that was not allowed to be electronic makes no sense whatsoever, and it's a fascinating study. But also that if the court carefully reads the good evidence, the opposite of what Ron Duncan has said is the case. On page four of the report, the discussion of the groundwater level trends shows relatively few of the 13 plus monitoring wells having decreased wa groundwater levels. In the Aroma area, um, Soquel Creek Water District's monitoring wells, S. CA3 and SCA4 have stable groundwater levels over the last two years. That's coming from your documents. In the discussion of groundwater pumping, it's stated overall basin groundwater levels have been recovering over multiple years through water years 2017 due to increased groundwater production. And you can see figure two. In water year 2016, municipal pumping in the basin was at the lowest recorded since 1977. And the decrease corresponds with increased public awareness about the importance of sustainable water conservation through conservation and curtailment programs instituted by local water agencies and drought-related action by the state of California. All of these items are why so many of us have backed and been thrilled that Becky has the wherewithal to act as a lawyer and say, those are the reasons we're seeing this doesn't make any sense on enough levels and we haven't been answered. And there's more and more, most of this reads like an amazing script for a movie. The number of things that have gone haywire and not been addressed continue to confound. Your time is up. And. Thank you to the pre three previous speakers. I, I applaud Becky Steinbrenner for her research and her efforts to protect the water, defend the water from major problems with this project that's expensive, can't get out the pharmaceuticals. Um, I think the venue does need to be changed, and I think there's so many issues here. And I've asked before, but maybe I have to submit a document. I remember at one of the workshops on the pure water, it listed 
the different corporations, seems like there were about nine that would be participating in this project to make it happen. And the finances and the corporate interests in it is another very large disturbing question. And injecting chemicals into the groundwater for a dubious project and charging the ratepayers huge amounts, it's, it's uh, very unsettling, extremely disturbing to me. We already have enough trouble with water contamination from the various pollutants we have all over the place. Um, this seems to me to add more to it and because you put a title of pure on it, doesn't mean in reality it's pure. I think it's purely deceptive, and I really consider it poop water that's tertiary treated. And um, I, I would like to see this project of pure water not go forward. Thank you. All right. That is all for tonight. We are now adjourned to a closed session. We will empty the room and come back up directors in a couple minutes. <laughs>